I've never met so many cowards in our black men in show business. 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin. Steve Harvey recently had an intense emotional moment during which he apparently broke down in tears, and the whole incident got the grapevine buzzing. Steve isn't the type to shed tears frequently when he's actually in the business of making people laugh, so his impromptu raw emotions became a cause for concern. However, what got everyone worried was a cryptic message that he sent in his unscripted moment of grief. What message did Steve Harvey send, and what are the details of the rumors? We've got all the inside scoops, so ensure you watch to the end. Steve Harvey is an accomplished accomplished comedian who has seen and done it all. From his days as a radio host to a stand-up comedian to movies and TV, Harvey has set his name in the blinding lights of Hollywood. His books, Think Like a Man and Think Like a Man 2, have been ultra-successful, spawning movies of the same names. His eloquence, charisma, and sharp quips have seen him host some of the most prestigious and elegant events, both locally and internationally. His TV shows like The Steve Harvey Show and Little Big Shots have become household names, and his stand-up shows have seen sold out venues. However, in a recent interview with Today, the actor and producer claimed he almost ended it all, leaving many wondering what's going on with the Family Feud host. According to him, he's putting in more grueling hours at work, which is currently suffocating him. However, many fans feel that Steve's confession goes deeper than meets the eye. They think that his ominous statement isn't only limited to his work on TV, but there's a lingering vial beneath the surface, which we will come to in a bit. Steve Harvey's 15th anniversary of hosting the exciting exciting family show Family Feud is coming up, and he's putting in serious hours into the filming to make it a grand one. Speaking on Today, the accomplished host who has helmed the show since its inception in 2010 says he's more excited about leaving his mark. He explained that when he first took on hosting duties, he gave his all to the show and that it almost took his life. When I first got this show, we did eight shows a day, three days a week. We did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I did eight shows a day, I did 24 in a week, and I almost ended myself, he said, and then we got it down to six shows a day and then that was that was murder's row for me after a while because of the way I work you know I'm not just reading the questions you know it's actually a show for me he explained that the production didn't stifle his creative abilities, but allowed him to put his little mark on the show. He noted that the first few years were a mountain climb for him, but as he grew in experience, he became used to it all. They allowed me to put my own little stamp on this show. I'm pretty fortunate, man, in that this format is kind of like tailor-made for my gift. Furthermore, Harvey noted that at first they, the years were kind of blowing by, but now I kind of feel them all. Many have wondered whether Harvey rehearses with both families before the show is taped or they just got with the flow, and apparently the latter is the case. The game show host noted that he likes to experience the questions and answers from the two feuding families in real time. Every time I come around the corner, it's a show for me, and I don't know if the audience realizes the real energy it takes to make this feel like a new day. However, though he enjoys shooting every bit of the show, the energy required to keep up can be exacting, especially when he's shooting multiple shows a day. He noted that one show, which involves only two families, takes about an hour to complete. Then, he had 20 minutes to catch his breath, dress up, and shoot another show as if it were a different day. He explained that it was tiring to produce a new energy for each episode, knowing very well that it was the same day and the same audience. I gotta come around here like I've never seen these people, like I haven't been out here today, and to produce that energy over and over is taxing. It's a little taxing. Now, he does four shows a day and shoots for four days, but even that is energy draining. Speaking on his last hura, the comedian has plans to do one last stand-up before he hangs his boots on his television career, or probably before before he passes on. The only way I can do one more special is that it would have to be at the end of my television career because it will end my television career. I want to do one more. I'd have to call it something like, well, this is it or something like that. However, others think that the comedian was sending a cryptic message. They believe that he was considering taking his life because of the apparent pressure from certain bigwigs in Hollywood. Though Harvey has paid his dues in the entertainment industry, many believe that his success isn't down to luck or talent, but by unseen hands and puppet masters. These people pushed him from nowhere and made him a star. Many feel that he's an industry plant who's kissed somebody's behind and got rewarded with these huge TV deals and comedy specials. Though nothing has been proven, many people suspect Steve's puppet masters are Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. These three people appear to share a connection that goes beyond mere friendship into something like a master-slave relationship. Rumors have been running around for years that Steve is Oprah's lapdog, always doing her bidding. However, Oprah and Tyler Perry's demands might have been overbearing in recent times, and that is forcing the talk show to end his life. 
Probably he's tired of doing their bidding and would want to break free from their shackles, but given their power and influence, the only way he thought he could free himself was to end it all. Now, I understand all these might sound preposterous, but one theory that seems to be very plausible is that some of Steve's colleagues have revealed his shady character to the world, which could be driving him crazy. On the surface, Harvey seems a nice, happy-go-lucky, funny, religious man who gels well with everybody, but some of his fellow comedians think of him as the devil himself. They see him as a jealous, conniving snake who hides behind his friendly facade to fool his fans and his victims. Some wouldn't want to be in the same room with him, and if they ever came face to face with him, all hell would break loose. One such is Cat Williams. Cat has been on the tail of Little Big Shot's host since anyone can remember. Their feud spans decades, making it difficult to remember exactly what started the whole beef. However, the whole feud reached its climax when Williams appeared on Club Shay Shay at the end of last year. Cat claimed that Steve Harvey wasn't funny in real life and that he wasn't as eloquent as he would have people believe. He felt that Harvey was a fraud who stole other comedians' materials and presented them as his own. But what surprised many fans was his take on Harvey's relationship with the late Bernie Mac. When Big Mac passed, Steve Harvey cried the most and waxed lyrical about how great the comedian was when he was alive. Steve eulogized Bernie at his funeral with flowery words that painted a picture of what Big Mac meant to him. He also played crucial roles in getting Bernie's high school to rename their main auditorium after the late comedian, as well as ensuring that November 14th marked Bernie Mac's day. Throughout all these ceremonies, Harvey visibly shed tears, telling the world how much he'd miss Bernie and how he'd be joining him soon. However, Cat Williams claims it was all a lie and that the TV host shed those tears for the camera. He claimed that Harvey hated Bernie when he was alive and did all he could to bring him down. Shannon Sharp then asked whether Harvey and the rest of the kings of comedy approached him to replace Bernie. Cat responded in the affirmative, but he said he turned them down because they disrespected Bernie Mac while he was with them. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you Bernie. He continued, you S on Bernie and then come get me. I'm the next king. Why? Because all the time Bernie was here, you was acting like you were funnier than him. The reason you Harvey was supposed to go last was because it was your tour. Tell the truth, it was Steve's tour, not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These were the guys opening for him. Of course, you gotta close it because it was your tour. According to him, Harvey couldn't crown the tour because the audience didn't find him funny enough. He said that it didn't matter where they put Bernie because he was going to shine no matter what, and he did. You can't beat the best, and until you humble yourself, you'll forever be kinged by the king. Cat also touched on Harvey's apparent beef with Bernie Mac, which lasted for a few years until Mac's passing. During his turn on Club Shay Shay, Steve Harvey was asked about his beef with Bernie Mac, and the talk show host claimed that it had to do with Bernie's desire to be a movie star. Harvey then insinuated that he didn't want to be a movie star, but wanted to stay true to his talent, which was stand-up comedy. He claimed that though he became busy with his TV shows, he still found time on the weekends to tour cities and states. However, Cat rubbished all his claims, alleging they were lies, revealing that Harvey always wanted to be a movie star but didn't get the opportunities. You couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Potato Head. He continued that Steve stopped doing stand-up comedy because he, Cat Williams, defeated him in a comedy battle a few years ago. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy, with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people, and lost. Because Cat Williams said he was actually bald, and that was a wig. And I went in, and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Cat alleged that Harvey's desperation to become a movie star caused him to call the producers of Ocean's Eleven and ask them to drop Bernie for him. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie Mac and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean's Eleven to get that Bernie's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Interestingly, DJ Ed Lover, a longtime friend and confidant of Bernie Mac, agreed with Kat's statements, claiming that Bernie told him of Steve's hatred for him. On the January 5th episode of the Come On podcast, the veteran DJ and radio host said, the stuff that Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey calling to try to get Bernie's role on Ocean's Eleven and that kind of stuff, Bernie told me out of his own mouth, the New York native said. I believe Bernie Mac when he said Steve Harvey hated on him. 
He also exposed Steve's apparent lies about being homeless when he actually never was. Many of Steve's motivational messages include tales of him being homeless and sleeping in a car. He's also told stories of how he lost everything and how his wife held him down during the times when he was down. As inspiring as it sounds, Kat thinks it was all lies and that Steve was earning good money back in the day when he was touring with Mark Curry. It's like Steve Harvey telling you he was homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago. He was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. Kat's searing attacks on Steve Harvey were thought to have pushed the TV host to the brink of ending it all because fans find it difficult to think that one man can take all these insults and still stand firm. Curiously, Kat isn't the only comedian to take Harvey to the cleaners for his apparent bad behavior of stealing people's jokes. A few years ago, Mark Curry also called out Harvey for using his jokes on his shows. He called Harvey's plagiarism a B-move and wondered why he would do that when he was already rich. Narrating how the whole incident went down, the 62-year-old comedian explained that he was home one day when a good friend of his called him and asked him to put on the TV and tune in to a particular channel. He wondered why a friend would randomly call and instruct him which channel to watch without telling him why. But all the same, he did as he was told. To his surprise, he saw Steve Harvey stealing his Halloween joke word for word. Mark claimed he told Steve about it, and he promised not to use the material again. However, Steve apparently went back on his word and used the same material on his show, Kids Say the Darndest Things. This angered Mark Curry, who called Steve out once again. He told TMZ, My thing with Steve Harvey, he used my material on both his platforms. Curry told TMZ staff, You're taking money out of my pocket. You've made it. You're very wealthy. Stop using my material. Mark Curry, known for his hit sitcom, asked Harvey to stop using his material and learn to create his own. However, when TMZ contacted Steve Harvey for his thoughts on the plagiarism allegations leveled against him by Mark Curry, he flatly denied them. Mark Curry need to grow up. Steve Harvey ain't been on stage since 2015. When the reporter pointed out that Curry said he used one of his jokes on his show, Steve Harvey retorted, Ask Mark Curry what joke he's talking about. Tell him to grow up, man. The presenter then told him that Mark accused him of using the joke on his TV show, Little Big Shots, to which a shocked Steve Harvey responded, Are you kidding me? He still ain't said what joke it was. Get a life. Get a career. Go do something, man. When asked whether Mark was probably using that to land him a stand-up comedy with Netflix or HBO, Harvey laughed and said, Go ahead and get one. I got five of them. Six of them. That'll be good. I'll be happy for him. Finally, the Think Like a Man author claimed that he was at peace with himself and didn't need to make peace with Mark Curry. However, fans did a little bit of digging and discovered that Mark Curry had a case. According to fans, the two comedians told a similar Halloween joke, but Curry seems to have told his joke first when the timelines were compared. Now, it isn't 100% airtight proof that Harvey stole his joke. Comedians usually hire writers to aid them in penning funny lines, so it's possible that one writer plagiarized Curry's joke without Steve's knowledge. However, fans expected Steve to apologize when he found out that his joke was eerily similar to Curry's, especially when Curry drew his attention to it. But he wouldn't. Rather, he went on the offensive, calling Curry all sorts of names and telling him to grow up. Fans sided with Curry when he said Steve was rich and needn't steal other comedians' material. They were disappointed in Steve for mocking Mark Curry when it was evident that his show, The Steve Harvey Show, was also similar to hanging out with Mr. Cooper. Monique also appeared to echo Cat Williams' words when she suggested the talk show host was a cat coward and a hypocrite who pretended to love her. I've never met so many cowards in our black men in show business. This was at the height of Monique's issues with certain black movie producers in Hollywood. The comedian and actress had accused Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, and Lee Daniels of blackballing her and called them all sorts of names on stage and in the media. Many people, including Harvey, blamed Monique for her apparent blackball, saying she brought all that on herself. Statements like that infuriated the soul plane actress, who ripped into the talk show host for being a hypocrite. He accused Harvey of not hearing her side of the story before going public, telling his millions of listeners that she burned too many bridges. She also lashed out at Harvey for apparently telling lies about her on D.L. Hewley's show. A few years back, Monique had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Steve Harvey, which aired on his show. At the end of the show, the two comedians appeared to have ironed out their differences and made peace, but Steve seemingly stoked the fires again when he made an appearance on D.L.'s show. According to Steve, he had portions of his heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Monique edited out to protect her. However, Monique rebutted, claiming it was all lies. Rather, she 
she explained that it was Steve who made some racist remakes that resulted in two of his shows being removed from TV. She felt that Harvey was a spineless coward who would say one thing off camera and then another when the cameras were rolling. Another comedian to call out Steve Harvey is Nick Cannon. In an interview with DJ Vlad, the drumline actor was questioned about his thoughts on Diddy dating Harvey's daughter Lori. He said he wouldn't have a problem with that, but he would have been heartbroken if she was his daughter. I wouldn't have a problem with that, but yeah, I'd be not, heartbroken not. if that was my daughter. Yeah. And, and they're hanging out to, with Steve Harvey yeah. and her mom and everything else like to that. To each his own. But I, I would feel like fathers, I failed as a father. He said that if he were sitting across the table with her daughter's boyfriend, who was the same age as him, he would have felt disappointed. This statement from Nick generated a buzz on the internet, with many people, especially fans from the black community, slighting Steve Harvey for allowing Diddy to date his daughter. At the time, both Diddy and Lori, or even Steve Harvey, never denied the rumors, which gave room for more speculations. The rumors started in the summer of 2019 when they were on a short vacation in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, before jetting off to Italy, where they dined with Lori's parents. Later, the two of them were seen walking hand-in-hand in, hand in matching outfits in Manhattan. A few months down the line, Lori was spotted with a huge diamond ring on her finger at a Ciroc event, and soon the rumors swirled that she was engaged to Diddy. Some gossip blogs claimed that she was betrothed to the Bad Boy Entertainment CEO, given the relationship he had with her father. She later shut down the rumors on her social media pages, claiming she was still single. However, the relationship allegedly hit the rocks in the same year when Lori unfollowed Diddy on Instagram. One Deep Throat source linked to Diddy reportedly told E! News that the relationship was just a fun fling and nothing serious. He and Lori had a fun fling, but Diddy is still healing and focusing on himself right now. He is not ready to be in a long-term committed relationship and is focusing on his kids right now. Many fans expressed their disappointment in Lori, especially when she was rumored to have dated Justin Combs, the son of Diddy. They laid the blame squarely at Steve Harvey's feet for being a bad father. The intense criticism Steve Harvey and her daughter faced forced her to deny dating father and son at the same time. In an interview with Bustle magazine, the model and entrepreneur said, I try to just not let any type of negativity or rumors or anything like that make me stoop down to that level and go back and forth with it or whatever. Speaking to E! News reporter Adrian Baylon, the 27-year-old Lori stated, I've heard I dated a father and son before. Absolutely not true, said Harvey. I've even heard that I'm a lesbian at one point. So you know, there's been a lot of different things, a lot of stories, a lot of misconceptions. She claimed most of these misconceptions were the result of her silence on social media. According to her, she'd hear a rumor romantically linking her with a guy whom she'd never met in her life before and wonder how the gossip mills churn out such baseless stories. It's so funny because I'm so quiet. There's been so many stories that have been made up about me. I've seen stories about me being fully in love with somebody and we have this whole relationship and I'll see the guy and I'm like, I've actually never even met him before. Dismissing all these rumors as mere gossip, Lori told the E! News reporter the valuable relationship advice that her father, Steve Harvey, gave her. Her dad told her that she was the prize. Clarifying what she meant, the model and entrepreneur said, that means not compromising my values, my happiness, my peace, not settling for less than what I know I deserve and not being afraid to walk away from a situation if it's no longer serving me. However, fans wouldn't buy this explanation from her insisting that she and Diddy were, indeed, an item in 2019. They wondered why mere friends would wear matching outfits, vacation together, and even dine with their parents. Some also questioned why Lori would unfollow Diddy on social media a few months after their rumored relationship hit the headlines. These things didn't add up, and fans wanted explanations. Other theorists brought up the idea Lori probably was wasn't in love with Diddy, but was forced since her father was seemingly on Diddy's payroll. Hence, the young lady couldn't say no to Diddy and couldn't publicly acknowledge the relationship. Diddy and Steve Harvey go way back to the 90s when the rapper was just starting to make a name for himself in the hip-hop game. Recently, Suge Knight alleged that Steve Harvey supported Diddy during the infamous East Coast-West Coast feud that resulted in the loss of lives and property. He claimed that though Steve appeared to be a peacemaker who wanted to see both feuding parties bury their differences, that was further from the reality. According to him, he heard that the talk show host would insult the West Coast rappers behind their backs and laugh in their faces. These allegations led fans to believe that Steve Harvey was probably on the payroll of Diddy. Thus, Diddy only dated Lori as a thank you for all these years of financing her father. Adding up all these theories, it is easy to see why Steve might want to take his life. After all, if all these things are true about one man, then living would be much more difficult than passing away. The pressure alone can be crazy, but we hope that Steve would pull through and become a better man, if only what we are gathering is true, which brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching.